We have two iPhone 13 Pros. Every year, Apple adds another speed bump for non-Apple authorized repair shops. They do that by serializing components to the logic board, making it nearly impossible for third-party repair shops to replace components. Last year, they serialized the camera, disabling some features if you replace it. They've since removed that with an update, but we're still left with an annoying message. The year before that was a screen, and before that was a battery. My goal today is to take a look at the insides of these devices and determine whether Apple has added another speed bump for us this year. We're going to be opening up both devices, taking a look at the insides, and swapping the logic boards from one device to the other. Doing so would trigger any and all of Apple's unable to verify messages. I'm also really poor now, so if you could leave a like on this video, it would make me feel a lot better. First things first, these are brand new devices, so we do have to unbox them. I'm just gonna take off the wrap, and we'll get that. And that is the iPhone 13 Pro. It looks a lot like the 12 Pro. Obviously, it doesn't come with a charger because Apple. The cameras are noticeably bigger and the notch is noticeably smaller. So we got this one opened up. It's time to open up the blue one. There we go. And we got that cool iOS 15 animation. So it comes with the standard Seaport charger and instruction manuals, the SIM ejector and the Apple sticker. We're gonna put these aside and we're gonna go through the activation process and get these ready to go. So it is taking a little bit longer to activate. Um, the activation server can't be reached on here. Uh, I'm assuming the server is kind of overloaded because everybody's buying this phone. We're gonna keep trying and see what happens. Okay, so after a few tries, it did activate. So we're just gonna go quickly through this and get this thing opened up as soon as possible. We're now at the home screen. So um, it's time to open these up and hopefully I don't break anything. So because this is a brand new phone, uh, I obviously don't have any schematics or any repair guides or anything like that. So I just kind of have to look around and see. Apple's pretty predictable. They've been doing the same kind of uh, method for opening up the phone for a long time. So there's two pencil up screws at the bottom. All we gotta do is unscrew. Unscrew the second one. Now we're just gonna apply some heat to the front of the phone to loosen up that adhesive. Okay, the phone is nice and hot. We're gonna stick our Jimmy tool in. And the gap is really, really small between the screen and the frame this year. There we go. We're just gonna gently pry up on it. I'm prying up on mostly glass right now, so it's a little bit risky. And if I break the screen, this video is kind of screwed. So let's uh, make sure we don't. Gonna apply some more heat. And we're just gonna continue to pry up. Just gentle nudges, nothing crazy. There we go. Oh, we had it for one second. There we go. So the pry tool is now under the screen. We just need a guitar pick tool, and we're just gonna pry around, loosening up all of that adhesive. Again, I have never opened this phone or fixed it before, so I'm just as excited as you are. So far, it seems very similar to the 12 Pro, aside from the notch and the cameras. Okay, so it does open up from the left side. You can see those flex cables in there. So it is very similar to the 12. We're almost inside, I keep on prying. Wow, the screen is really thin. I mean really, really thin. I think that's the thinnest screen they've ever made. Keep on prying. And let's see what this looks like. The, thinnest, the screen is so thin I can't even hold it. Open it up, wow, that is a pretty interior. So it looks like Apple went for kind of a minimalistic design with the battery. Oh, I've never seen this before. So the front earpiece speaker is always on the screen, but this time they decided to keep it on the inside, leaving less space for the board. And the camera bracket is bigger than ever. Interesting. Okay, so this is a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and this is the iPhone 13 Pro. So you can see uh, the interior of this phone is actually a lot prettier than this one. 
I'm surprised. As I said earlier, the front earpiece speaker used to be on the actual screen. They've transferred it over to the actual interior. We used to have this empty space for it to close. Now it's just there, which I think is actually a really good idea. They've shrunk the face ID and front camera sensors pretty dramatically. We had this extra space over here, so I guess they, uh, they used that up. The camera module seems to be a lot bigger this time, so interesting. And the battery is bigger for the Pro. This is the Pro Max, and it's not that far off. So we're gonna try and get the screen removed. Let's see what kind of screws they used. Looks like they used the classic uh, tri-point screws. So we're just gonna unscrew. And now we can remove the first bracket. There we go. So we're gonna have to look for the battery connector, which seems to be right here. The cable comes up from here and goes here. So we're gonna disconnect that and we can see that the phone is now off. So now we can disconnect the screen. These connectors are a lot bigger than what they usually make them. And we're also gonna have to remove this bracket to disconnect the front earpiece. Or actually, it's the front dot projector. We'll find out later. Unscrew. And of course they added in a random Phillips screw because that's what Apple likes to do. And it would seem that there's a hidden screw over here. Wouldn't call it hidden, but definitely annoying to get to. Now we can remove the second bracket. And we're gonna find the front earpiece speaker, which is right over here. We're gonna disconnect that. And now we have the screen free. So this is our screen. You can see how thin it is. This is a 12 Pro Max screen and this is the 13 Pro screen. I mean, it's, it's really thin. It's the thinnest I've seen on an iPhone. Okay, so now is what I would say is the hardest part because I have to figure out how to take off this logic board and um, there's usually something that could break or something that will get damaged along the way. So uh, we'll hope that, that doesn't happen and just unscrew everything we can see. Unscrew. We'll remove this. So there has been some rumors that the board, I mean that the battery is paired to the board and it won't boot if it doesn't have the same battery. So we're about to see if that's true. I really hope it isn't because that means a lot of people are gonna be out of jobs. Remove what I think is the charging port flex cable. And I can't tell if the SIM card is actually part of the board this time. They've been kind of taking it off and taking it on, putting it as a separate component or mixing it with the board. So we're gonna disconnect all the flex cables. These are for the camera. There we go. These are flex cables too. And this is probably the speaker and the front camera. Now it looks like we have one screw here and that may be it. That should be the charging port. That may be it, honestly. It looks like we just have one screw. Uh, there's something going on here. I think that's, I think we have to unscrew part of the front earpiece speaker as well. So let's get to doing that. Unscrew. So the screw I'm unscrewing right now is actually a special type of screw and it can hold another screw inside the same screw. So I call it screwception, but there's an actual word for it. I don't really recall what that is at the time, but I'm sure someone in the comments will mention it. Okay, so we do also have to remove the SIM card. We're just gonna pop the SIM card out. And there we go. So we can see that the board is wiggling. That is a good sign. So we may be able to just pry up on it and make sure nothing is in the way. See if it comes out. Again, I'm not gonna force anything because that would be bad. It's a lot of money. does not look like it okay so that is our iPhone 13 Pro logic board has the cool a15 bionic sticker almost like Apple wants you to see what's inside but yeah they had an L shape they were going with the L shape last year it does look really nice this is tiny compared to the actual phone this is the powerhouse of the phone so so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this iPhone 13 Pro the black one and then we're gonna swap the boards and see what happens unscrew 
because the screen is so much thinner, it's a lot easier to break it. So you always want to be careful if you're opening these devices up. Open it up. So we're going to be doing the same thing. Remove the screen. There we go. And that is our second board. What we're going to do, we don't actually need to swap both of them. We just need to swap one. So I'm going to swap this one over to here. We're going to just move this over here. And just to be clear, this is the board for the black phone and the other board is over there. So I'm going to be swapping the black phone board into the blue phone. There we go. And all we're going to do is just reconnect everything. We're just going to click all the connectors in. So I'm really hoping the rumors are not true and the phone does still boot, but there's only one way to find out. Back in, there we go. That's the battery connector. So we're going to be taking the black screen. So this now has the black screen, the black screen and the blackboard in the blue phone. So we're going to be taking this and we're going to be moving the other phone aside. So every single part is not the, the original part it came with, including the screen and the front earpiece speaker. So what I'm expecting is unable to verify genuine battery, unable to verify genuine screen, unable to activate face ID, unable to verify the back camera uh, is genuine. So aside from that, uh, I'm not sure what to expect. So I guess we're going to find out. Okay, so we're going to connect the black screen and we're also going to connect the black front proximity sensor and we're also going to connect the battery battery is a little weird to connect this year there we go so this is the moment of truth i'm i'm really hoping apple didn't completely uh stop us from repairing this phone of course china will come up with a way eventually but if we can't do repairs now uh it's kind of hopeless so um make sure you guys are vocal about right to repair because this is why it's so important so we're going to turn on the phone and we have the apple logo so it doesn't look like uh, that rumor was true. So there's still power going to the board and it's still working. The screen dimmed, so that means it's getting ready to go to the home screen. We're at the home screen and all we have is an important camera message. So all we have is an important camera message. That's weird. Okay, so face ID doesn't work. Uh, there's an important camera message and an important battery message. So nothing really new here compared to last year. I was expecting like a unable to verify genuine charging port or something crazy. Let's check the camera. So that all seems to work. You can definitely tell that the screen refresh rate is higher. I mean, I can, I can definitely tell it's a lot more responsive. So that is good. It took Apple way too long to do that, but that's okay. All right. So it doesn't look like there's anything significant that they changed. Um, I'm going to go through some tests and see if there's something hiding. I have to admit, the speaker is a lot better than the iPhone 12. Okay, MagSafe still works. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. All right. So guys, the rumors were definitely not true. This phone still boots up with another battery and still seems to work fine. You can still use the phone uh, without any issues. I will, however, say that this may prove to be very difficult for some novice repair people. This flex cable here, hopefully, uh, well, it definitely will interrupt Face ID if you break it during the repair. So this definitely will be an issue. But aside from that, the phone is still working and everything is good. Uh, you will get these annoying messages, but um, that's just that's just the way Apple operates now, I guess. So uh, the last test we want to do is to see if the phone crunches. So we're going to put the phone in position and get that crunch. Crunch again. I also do want to apologize for the audio quality throughout the video. Uh, for whatever reason, my mic was cranked all the way up. So I got really fuzzy audio. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.